Drivers, we are here today to celebrate the first anniversary of ReDriver 2, the PC version of the PlayStation 1 game, which was itself a celebration of the 20th anniversary of Driver 2 release. Are you still following me? Many of us enjoy this impressive reverse engineer project by Sopi that allowed us to rediscover the game with a decent drawing distance and frame rate. Although the first public version was launched on November 14th, the project has continued to evolve since then, especially in terms of user experience, which is why I wanted to make this video to review all these changes and remind you of the incessant activity of the driver community. Of course, to better assess the enhancements of WeDriver 2, a brief look at the original game can help us remember how far we have come. I sometimes read requests in the comments asking if it's possible to increase the draw distance, but they have usually forgotten how bad it was in Driver 2 and already well increased in Roy Driver 2. For example, you can set the value on 411 in the setup text file to get the same drawing distance as the 2000 game, the max value being set by default at 1200. This quick comparison should be enough by itself to explain why ReDriver 2 is an excellent project, without forgetting that the frame rate is now a steady 30 FPS, unlike the roller coaster one we got on PlayStation 1. Graphical enhancements are a big part of ReDriver 2 benefits, alongside the ability to play it on modern PC, which is much more convenient than replugging an old PlayStation 1 to an old TV or using an emulator that does not provide the same quality than ReDriver 2. Increased draw distance, better resolution with anti-aliasing and smooth frame rate already allow you to play the missions once again with a fresh look at the experience. But Sopi did not stop on fixing existing content, but it was also able to retrieve and put back cut content made by the dev 21 years ago. In this case, we are talking about the monorail in Las Vegas, connecting the Luxor Casino to the Mandala Bay on the Strip. The 3D model on, of the monorail was still in the game files and Sopi was able to animate it back in the game. With the enhanced draw distance, this addition does the job to make the place more lively as a small bonus, yet on the basis of official content. Magazines covering the news, which was great for the project exposure, sometimes made exaggeration on the enhancements by stating the game was now at 60 FPS, and a few feedback from players confirmed this misunderstanding had an impact on gamers' reception. However, a smooth 30 FPS is much more than what we had on PlayStation 1, trust me. The smooth frame rate does make the same impression than going for 30 to 60, but the truth is, is that we were starting from way below 30. ReDriver 2 was even featured in the print version of PC Gamer with an article by Jeremy Peel. Beyond official content, ReDriver 2 also benefits from creations made by the driver community, in the same way the driver syndicate does with the add-ons. There is less community content for ReDriver 2, however, but that can be easily explained by the upcoming Open Driver project that I already covered, but that definitely need another video on the subject. Anyway, you still can enjoy great content such as Reshade by Ultra Gravy that is basically turning the game into a GTA Trilogy Definitive and Edition-like experience with a lot of new effects added in the visuals. Sadly, it requires a lot of CPU power, so I can't show you footage recorded by myself, but if you have a great PC, you should try it. The mod kept improving as Ultra Gravy became more familiar with Richard, and the latest version is very impressive and available on the driver Discord. 
Overall, the community enjoyed replaying Redriver 2 and shared some clips at the same time. I made two compilations with them and I hope to do one more because it is interesting to see many different gameplay from different persons enjoying the same game in their own way. The other big content creation that I would like to mention today is the alternative mod pack by Black Daily. Thanks to Mission Scripts edits, the goal of the pack is to provide an alternative version of the well-known missions campaign we all loved to beat. You get new car textures, new chases path, shorter timer and overall the idea is to get a more difficult campaign mode. I have yet to try it myself but there is already a few walkthrough videos on the mod pack so at least it is possible to do all the missions. But at the same time it was played by an expert player which is also one of the best speedrunners of the game. Speaking of which, the speedrunning scene was revitalized by the project, especially due to something I haven't discussed yet, loading times. They are almost completely gone in Redriver 2 and just with that, the time you need to beat the game becomes much shorter. The steady frame rate also means that the reactivity of the controls is a bit better, so of course speedrunners spent a lot of time to make run on Redriver 2 and I guess enjoy the experience in the process. The most active ones are Red Ricky, Viper Rising and the Survivor and they were already the big players of the original PlayStation 1 version speedruns. The Survivor is at the moment the world record holder with a time of 1 hour and 18 minutes. For the comparison, the record for Driver 2 on original hardware is held by Viper Rising with a time of 2 hours and 21 minutes. Basically, you lost 1 hour on PlayStation 1 because of loading times. I haven't tried yet to beat the game in one sitting, but I guess my time will be closer to the PlayStation 1 times, especially because of missions such as Find the Crew or Hijack the Track. It also reminds me that when the project first launched, you could play the missions requiring to chase a vehicle with recording made by members of the driver community such as Firebolt, Nick, Oranov, Snoopy and myself. It was funny to make and also to play because the behavior were very different, especially mine on Chase the Gunman that was way easier than the other ones. Now the chase replays have been urbanized, which is indeed a better thing for speedrunners' fairness. Another important improvement and recurring questions is the following. How to install the game? If you remember, I was already briefly mentioning it in my last year presentation of the project and then I made a few dedicated videos on the installation process, following SOPI guidelines on the subject. Today, and we can thank Sopi for working on this, it is very easy to install the game and the videos aren't needed anymore. To stay in the legality, you just need your PlayStation 1 CD to extract the required files and then Redriver 2 can handle by itself the rest of the process thanks to the launcher installation resort. The user experience was indeed the areas with the most improvement after the release of the project, with new mapping controls if you want to play with joysticks, fix of replay inconsistency and so on. Sopi spent a lot of time on general polishing and bug fixes, sometimes barely noticeable like the fix of the car drifting on the Havana ferry, but which make a big difference. So, I hope this review of the post-launch events of Redriver 2 was instructive, maybe it even gave you the urge to play again the game because its core gameplay has not aged and it's still a blast to chase or to be chased in Driver 2. But what about the future? Thankfully for us, Sopi has a few projects in the works and one of them is none other than Open Driver a platform that will merge Driver 1 and Driver 2 ports with even more graphical enhancements, more community add-ons thanks to easy edits and modding. I already gave a first look of Open Driver a few months ago, but Sopi made a lot of improvements to the project that is not yet publicly available. He kindly sent me a demo that I have yet to try, but I am sure I will be amazed by the content he has once more developed on his free time. And that brings me to the last part of the video 
how to support these great projects and to Sopi. He has a page where you can give him money. The link will be in the description and the comments. I already gave 5 euros a long time ago, but it doesn't feel enough considering how many hours I spent playing his games for free and how many content I was allowed to produce thanks to Sopi. I will make another donation and I encourage anyone who has the financial ability to do it as well. Now you know how to support the project and Sopi. The rest is up to you. I would also like to thank my own supporters, namely the film director producers of the Redriver Club, DriverDimension.com, French Contact, Neuroscience, Take On On YouTube, Paul Lanois, Al520i, and Emek McLaughlin. You can get custom emojis to use in the comments by clicking on the blue join button below the video and then becoming a member. In any case, see you soon, drivers.